Hello, Gemini. Welcome to the Plaid Sheep Oracle. Coming from the other side today for logistical reasons. Your reading, Gemini. So first of all, the, the sort of intro card is coming from the wordless Oracle deck. So there's that, this sense of no container or, or no, not, so not no container, but a very loose container so that you, you are very free or you wish to be very free. So this is the card coming up. And it's bringing up this idea that's sort of been floating around some of the readings a little bit of dancing something into being. That's certainly something one has seen, right? One sees in, in tribal traditions, the idea of, of dancing something, of, of dance in a ritual, bringing something to life or uh, bringing things in like a rain dance. And for you, you do, Gemini is, uh, you know, about words and thoughts, but those are not, of course, the only ways to communicate. Dance is certainly a very powerful way to communicate, as is music. Often one sees, you know, Pisces as a sign associated with music, but I associate Gemini very strongly with music. People that I know who have a strong Gemini placements all have, you know, music is a really big part of their experience. Uh, the person I know who has the biggest music collection that I have ever seen uh, has several Gemini placements. Uh, musicians, uh, a singer that I know, all Gemini placements. Also a film person, a filmmaker. So there's all these ways of communicating. And I don't, I don't know that you're that this reading is, is specifically, I mean, communication is definitely part of it. Uh, communication and expression. But it's more about freedom altogether. Uh, all the ways that, that one can think about being free. The top here of the deck is this vision of entering the ocean and this vast sky and clouds and mist and going kind of into the unknown. And then on the bottom is this card, which feels to me like imagination. But I would say if you wanted to, to pause the video and really sit with each of those cards and what may come up for you. Might be fun or useful. So then we have touched the sky. And again, this sense of imagination, of sending the mind out into the universe, um, seeking to channel new ideas, you know, maybe from your soul or from source or from whoever you perhaps think of as your muse.
Now, interestingly, the card below that is this journey card. And what's standing out for me um, is that she, and she has this sort of bridal thing going on here. And I'm feeling today like there's restraint there that really doesn't want to be there. And this, this seems more like self-restraint. Now it's not, it's not anything serious. Uh, this is a pretty, pretty light sort of thing. It's made out of ribbon. It's not wound around the neck. It's just kind of placed there. She's not yanking back on it, but there may be something and here, you know, as it is crossing the throat, that maybe there is something that you haven't wanted to say, some aspect of self-expression. The bottom is weaving flowers. And interestingly, this card normally comes out as a very positive idea for me that you're, you know, doing this marvelous thing, weaving flowers together. But today it's coming out a little bit as, as make work or something that you're doing instead of what you really want to do. That you're sitting here weaving flowers when you'd really rather be doing something else. That it's um, like making daisy chains when what you really want to do is to like have this massive kind of blowout of flowers. That there's some, there's some way that, that something that you're doing is smaller in some way than it wants to be. Then there's this, can you hear me? Are you, are you hearing your own desires? Do you have this idea that you aren't heard? Or that maybe you won't be heard if you express in the way that you wish to? And then there's new directions. So just by grabbing the seed and being carried away by it. And she does sort of look a little bit like she's looking with longing at this scene. And I was reminded just this weekend that if we encounter something that we long for, maybe something that we envy in other people, often you'll hear that, you know, if you're envious of somebody, then that, right, it's a sign of something that you want. It's a uh, communication that's coming in for you. I, I envy this person this. So clearly I want this. But something that uh, a teacher of mine spoke about to me recently, or in a class recently, is that kind of the energetic way through that is to celebrate the, the person for having whatever it is or being whatever it is that, that you want. So you see somebody who really loves their work, say, who is very fulfilled by what their profession, what they do. And if you feel envy for that, then really celebrate that person. Open up that channel. Say, that's wonderful, I want that. It's so wonderful that person has that. rather than resisting. And maybe the weaving flowers is part of that. 
perhaps. Because she's, right, she's weaving the flowers and she's got this hat that's covering her eyes. A way of distracting, of not seeing something that maybe makes you feel bad. Because you feel restricted. Princess of Cups. Newness in a new, new emotional experiences. A willingness to receive emotional information. to receive answers and perhaps inspiration through an emotional channel rather than through an intellectual one. And the bottom of the deck is the Princess of Wands, who is, right, inspired. Opened up allowing all of the passion to flow. Now, Jupiter, as you may know, as, as I'm speaking of this when I'm posting it, is moving through Gemini. He will be there until June 9th of 2025. And four days from now, on July 20th of this year, Mars moves in to Gemini. So he's met up with Uranus, gotten some fantastic new idea that he, that he just is ready to communicate. And he's going to move into Gemini where he can really do that through you. So what is, right, what is in the way? What is restricting this? Interestingly, there's this truce. You know, and calling a truce, right, it sounds good. But there's also a resistance to that, right? We, you know, we just decided to call a truce. We've given up fighting, and that's good. But a truce does not feel like a win-win situation to me. A truce feels like both sides just being exhausted and saying, you know what, we're not going to resolve anything, but we're going to stop fighting and just right, like move on or something. But without resolution, then whatever that thing was can come up again. And we've seen that it does, right, in the context of war. So there's something about having, right, having called a truce, maybe with the system, with society, right? I'm just, I, I'm tired of fighting it. I'm just, right, I'm going to ignore some things. I'm just going to get on with it. But the truce isn't really transcending or resolving. And I was just listening to an audiobook this morning while making my breakfast. And in it, a group of actors are putting on a dramatization of Bram Stoker's Dracula. And there's a little sequence of, of how to bring Renfield to life. And Renfield is the character who uh, becomes a slave to Dracula and he eats bugs and rats. And he believes that this is absolutely necessary to his well being because he is in thrall to Dracula. And for the first time, I really saw something that I've never seen before about that. 
which is that Renfield is us. Is all of us people, and I mean all of us, even, even the people who seem to be doing really, really well. That at some point we, right, we became enthralled to the system the societal norms, the way that we do things, what we think is inevitable. It's just the way it is. So we believe that we have to metaphorically eat bugs and rats in order to survive. So was that the truce? Now, now there is an adjustment coming. And this may be aided by astrological energies. As Jupiter moves through there, right? Because Jupiter wouldn't have any truck with that sort of thing. <laughs> and he's the philosopher king, the biggest planet in the solar system. way bigger than everybody except the sun itself. So this may be enabling you to see this reality that you don't have to be Renfield. that you don't have to be enthralled to this. And then there's this Seven of Cups debauch card, which, you know, always looks like, right, this is like toxic sludge waste. And what this seems like to me is that this adjustment justice character with a sword is they're, they're like, turning the sword or they're lifting the sword, they're doing manipulating the sword in some way. And as a result, this whole structure is rising out of this pool of toxic waste. These cups are being lifted out, right? All of that stuff is draining out of your cups. So all of the ways that you have compromised yourself, that you have um, that you have been compromised perhaps by others, uh, that you have been living in the system, thinking that you had no choice except to you know weave flowers and you know call this truce. Uh, you're coming out now. And the card under the Princess of Cups is the universe. The whole thing. So now you're out. You've been raised up by your own efforts, the good work that you've been doing on uh, how you think about things, the good work that you've been doing in resolving your own stuff, the good work that you've been doing in being compassionate and kind to yourself. Now is coming to fruition. And you have temperance. Now here with this rush of new energy arriving. This new rainstorm. Right, your cups are going to drain and then there's going to be this cleansing rain.
you know, the bottom is this nine of air, which is a nine of swords, but today it's not looking really nine of swordsy. I feel like this is, you know, sort of um, the middle ground where you see for the first time that what you thought were swords that might be really stabby are butterflies, moths, perhaps. Right, her face, she doesn't really seem that anxious to me. It's, uh, she seems as if she's observing these things clearly, perhaps for the first time. Uh, and then below temperance is the page of fire, the new beginning this, right, this princess of wands. So we have this eight in the air and it comes out different ways for me. And how it is coming out today is that you're being unwound. You've been restricted, you're, you're being unwound, released. from constriction. And that the primary way this is happening is through love. Through listening to the song of love, the long, the song that speaks of beauty and generative force and creativity and cooperation and the win-win and communion and community. So what do we get? The Ten of Water, <laughs> the Ten of Cups. Maybe for the first time, really feeling this energy. You know, we talk in the in the spiritual sphere a lot about um, you know keeping a positive frame of mind, turning towards positive thoughts, um, you know, keeping our eyes on what we want and, and these things. And and maybe up until this point, you've you've understood this intellectually. But this is feeling it, like really knowing it, not just comprehending it. So then we get the craftsman of fire, the new creative uh, endeavor. The new idea being uh, being worked on, right? Getting your hands into it, even if what we're talking about is you know writing a book or you know some other more uh, ethereal pursuit. And that is the exciting part that that creational process. It is of course nice to have a thing, right? To have a finished book or a finished sweater or a finished house. But the process is meant to be fun, right? That's meant to be juice and joy. Right below this, we have the eight of earth, the eight of pentacles the doing, right? Mars getting excited. Um, he meets Jupiter at about the midpoint of Gemini uh, at mid, in mid-August, August 14th. And then in September, he will enter Leo. So there is this period 
of Mars, of the doingness being in a more intellectual sphere. The planning, the dreaming, the musing, uh, maybe the trying things out. With Gemini, lots of different things. Thinking about adding different things, playing around. All right, and then Leo is, you know, this bring the fire kind of energy. The bottom of the deck is the pilgrim, the fool, setting out on this new adventure, on existing in the world without all these restrictions. being free, being no longer submerged in that. And so we have the guardian. Um, the, the masculine generative force. Uh, the protector. the feeling of sovereignty. And a feeling of, of security. And that the understanding of this generative force that exists in the world, in nature, in the universe itself, is where security lies. So then the messenger of water, this is the page of cups again. And I'm sort of feeling this repeating, right? Can you hear me? Right, the, the new idea arriving, the muse speaking to you. taking what you, what you planned even so far and taking it even further, right? Receiving the source-based inspiration. And then we have the Witch of Earth, right? Implementing things, bringing them into physical reality. And the crafts by the water with this, right? The rain dance coming back. So different ways, I wanna say there's, there's multiple vectors, multiple ways for bringing things into existence. And there's a call here to do it your way, whatever that way is. And that, that maybe there is also a call to add, right, to add this embodied element. You know, maybe it's dance. Maybe it's music. If you are somebody who engages in magical practice, maybe it's, um, you know, adding different kinds of physical elements to the practice. But you will know, I'm not, right? I'm not here to tell you how to do any of this. This is encouragement that the energies are really good for this adjustment to happen. For you to be lifted up out of anything that has been restricting you. So then advice, not surprised to see it. Earth magic. <laughs> it 
So when magic exists in the body, uh, the magic that exists in the earth, in source itself, and below that is the royal you. That you get to choose how you proceed. The bottom of the deck is this rose's kiss. The reminder, right? The reminder that love, right? It is love. the love of things that brings the true inspiration and the energy to bring things into being. So shining through, I think that speaks for itself. Also, the call of the muse. To, right, to be open to hearing new ideas, maybe that you hadn't considered. Being open to saying no to the truce. But also understanding that this is not, right, that you're not, that in saying no to the truce, you're not declaring war. You're just upending the whole thing altogether. That it's not about the conflict or pushing against the system. That it's a rejection of the idea that the system has power over you. And then we have healing the heart. Right? That's the, right, the focus, the space. And that when you do this, It may be a completion of a heart healing for you. It may also be spreading that to other people. I mean, you won't be able to help it. People are going to witness this. And if you proceed in that way, if you amplify everything that you see that you love, even if someone else has it and you don't, then you're just gonna move through with this inspiring energy. You may become the muse to others. But you have to be willing to step out of that container that you've been in, that we've all been in. Gemini, new paradigm, new paradigm. I hope that this is helpful, that it's encouraging that you are, that you are feeling this energy, that you feel ready to do this, that you're feeling the courage to do it. I wish you the very, very best, Gemini. And I will see you next time. So long.